My name is Malcolm Roach from Open Door Technology, and today we're going to talk about warranty policies and RMAs, or Return Merchandise Authorizations, in our Service Management Module. So first thing we're going to do is take a quick look at what we call warranty policies or the equipment. This is how we set up the warranty that's actually available on the equipment that you sell or you use internally. So we have a warranty policy list. You notice I have two different ones here. I have one that's called equipment warranty, and that's meant to be manufacturer warranty. And then the second one is you might have some kind of an extended warranty. You might be more familiar with this on cars where you buy extended warranty, but they can actually be due from different vendors. So you'll notice the warranty vendor for the manufacturer equipment claims are going to go to vendor number 20, and then claims on extended warranty will go to number 30. So we'll take a quick look at this equipment uh, warranty policy, and you'll see that We've got three different types of warranty belonging to this policy. So we've got a powertrain, including engine and transmission, everything but the powertrain, and we've got tires and track. These lines are effective, or, or these types are effective as of January 1st, 2022 in this example, but some of them have restrictions based on usage or time. So the engine and transmission, for example, the warranty is effective up until 1500 hours or one year. Um, equipment chassis, the warranty is just strictly based on one year. There's no usage requirement. And then finally, tires and tracks is only good for 90 days. And if you look on the coverage percentage, you'll see that they can have variable percentages as well. We're going to cover 100% of the first two, but only 50% of the tires and track. Okay, and if we exit back and take a quick look at the extended warranty, now we've just got the one line in there called extended warranty, but it's good for five years, but at only an 80% coverage. Okay, so what you can do in your system is you can flag items to say, hey, are they actually going to be subject to a warranty? Or, and if we look down here under service on this head gasket that we're going to add to this uh, service unit in a moment, you'll see that the warranty type is power. So if there's warranty, it'll be under whatever power type of warranty that you have available. And then the same thing is true on the labor, although the labor can be used anywhere else. So these are set up in what we call resources. And if we look on resources and we look for labor, then we've said, hey, the default is power, but we can always override that when we're within a document. So if something is for the chassis, we can change that line to a chassis or tires and track. We can change that to tires and track or extended warranty. But this is the default, can always be overridden. Okay, and then if we actually go to our inventory and we go look up that CAT 308 that we're talking about here later on, down here under the service, you'll see that the warranty policy by default, again, is set to equip 001 when we want to actually service the equipment. And the general default for warranty work is going to be power. It doesn't have to be. Uh, but that's just the way that got set up. And we have a general or generic manufacturer, in this case called Equip. But if you were selling the CAT 308, it would probably be Caterpillar. So anyway, we've set that up on the item card itself. Then when you sell it or you set it up in your own stock to service, what you have is you have service tickets. And the one we're going to be looking at today is number 38. So it's in here with a unit number, serial number. And then down below here, you'll have some setups for plan maintenance hours. You see this got 125 hours on it. So this is the unit that we're going to service. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the warranty elements that it's eligible for. And three of them are under that basic warranty policy that we looked at. And one of them is extended warranty. So now how do we use this? So how we'd use this is we set up a service ticket. In this case, I've got one set up already called uh, number, sorry, 122. And on here, I said I wanted an oil change and I wanted to change a head gasket. Now, this happens to be for an external customer called Mac Construction. You'll notice at the top, but it could be for equipment that's in your rental fleet or delivery truck or anything like that. So you can do internal rental or not, and you can do external equipment. And if you sell a unit to a customer, it's already set up there ready to start tracking the service. Okay, so if we look at this, we've got the oil change and we've got the change head gasket. Now, if we drill down on the head gasket, 
we've got two lines in here. We've got 17 hours of time and we've got one head gasket. And we've marked these as saying, hey, these are going to be claimed on warranty of powertrain type. And that was the defaults that were coming off of the inventory and the labor setups. But again, we could have overridden them. And claiming them on warranty, that means for the customer, they're going to get 100% discount. Okay, so if you look back here, you'll notice on this line, there's a cost to us on that, but there's no billable price. And so if we were going to go and actually print this to this screen, just to take a quick look at it, then you'll see that on the change head gasket section, all the labor has been marked as claimable under warranty and the parts, the sale price is zero, but the oil change is still being charged. So what happens next is that now we can go and do a customer sales invoice. Actually, we could probably open the sales invoice. Here's the sales invoice. I can open this up here, take a look at it, and I just need to add in a tax group code, and you'll see the line discount here has carried forward is 100%. So at this point in time, this invoice is ready to print and send to the customer. I'm just going to post it because I have no way to print it to show it to you other than just print it to the screen. It'll look basically the same as the service ticket. So we will post this, and it says that return merchandise authorization number three has been created for the warranty claim. Click on OK. Do you want to open the posted invoice? I'll say no. But if I go back to the service ticket, on a service ticket, I can now open up an RMA. And in this RMA, I've now claimed some expense on, on this. Okay. So this will be claimable to the, the vendor. And if the vendor doesn't allow all of it, you can then change the amounts here, process it, create a credit memo. And then any amount that isn't claimed, sorry, isn't covered by the warranty vendor, you do have the option of charging it back to your customer, the, the net difference. And that's entirely up to you whether you want to do that or not. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much.